Okay, last week we looked at Jesus crossing over the water, and I want to go back to verse 35 for just a second because I want to point out one thing. Of Mark chapter 4, verse 35 says, On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. And then he went, got in the boat and went to sleep. Okay? That's kind of an important thing when you look at what's going to happen in today, you know, what we look at today. Jesus is going to go across to the other side for a specific purpose, and that purpose will be accomplished. It would have been probably better for Jesus and the disciples if he would have just stayed on the other side on the same side overnight let the storm come let the storm go you know no worries no hurries type of thing um, because they were going to head into a storm and we looked at the fact that Jesus wasn't concerned about it got up and rebuked the storm and that's just how it went for him but it would have been nice in a big way if he could have stayed over there for the, everybody's safety. You know, just like Terry was just saying, they didn't understand everything at this point. Not till Jesus opened their eyes. And, and they were still learning and they were still hoping to get it. But Jesus had to do a particular job. And that particular job is what we're going to look at today. I don't, I, I, people have taken this the wrong way too many times, over and over and over, there's this big thing about casting out demons, uh, there's a, there's a self-proclaimed prophet called Gino Jennings, and have any of you ever heard of him at all? Okay, he's, he doesn't have it together, I'm just going to put it that way. And he was trying to cast out a demon from a guy. And uh, this went on and on and on, and he kept asking, don't you want to be free? Don't you want to be free? Don't you want to be free? And then he'd say, come out, come out, come out, come out. And this was just went on and on. He never was able to do it. He never was. Okay. Does that mean that God can't cast out demons today? He, can. He's, he absolutely can, and I believe would be willing to, should we grab the ball and go running with it. Jesus gave us an example of what he can do. The problem is, is when I am doing it to glorify me, then... Who am I to cast out a demon? Jesus gets the glory and things actually happen. Okay, now that this is kind of a no duh type situation for us. If we try to do it on our own, we can't get anywhere. But when God is working through us, he can do it. Now, uh, was it Howie, I think, Howard Brandt? that was talking about some place, I believe it was some place that he was ministering and him and a group of other guys had to go cast a demon out of somebody and it was a real thing. It was very real. I wonder how much of what we call, um, I don't know another way to put it, mental deficiencies, that we, that we call that today is actually demonic activity and then what happens is as a result of this demonic activity the person is in such agony internal and out external that they begin to um, take drugs and stuff you have a thought yeah, this here? Oh, yeah, Diana, did you start the video? Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, 
I didn't even pay any attention, honestly. Say, if you start dabbling in demonic things, the Ouija board, uh, <laughs> horoscope stuff, and yeah. you really get into that, then you're opening yourself up to this kind of stuff. Okay, how many of you have ever heard of yoga? <laughs> we all have, haven't we, in today's world? Yogi Bear. Yeah, yogurt. Oh. I'm, I'm very lactose intolerant. I, I won't tolerate yogurt. <laughs> Am I right? What's that? There's something involved inside of it. Okay, let me let me get to That's that because we're going to see. Say. We're going to see. What I'm trying to do is set the pace how this story that we're going to be looking at today can be used in today's world. Okay? Now, I can't conquer this stuff, but I know the one who can. And the one who can is living in me. You know, is this not how God works? Okay, so in yoga, you people say well it's just stretching no if you're just stretching call it just stretching and do your stretches don't do these poses that they tell you to do don't say the incantations that they tell you to say they don't teach you that in kindergarten here they teach you to do the poses and they teach you only that they don't tell you about incantations till you get a little older then when you're already integrated into it, then you get these incantations. And what they're for, what the whole purpose of doing these particular poses, um, the lotus position, the downward dog, the upward facing dog, the, uh, oh man, I can't even think of them all. There's all these different positions that you need to learn to do, okay? The reason why you do them is to open what they call your chakras. And each chakra is like a gate. This is what yoga is truly for. They tell you it's just stretching. It's not. It's not. Without uh, yoga, there would be no Hinduism, for example, or Buddhism. They're both very much entwined in this. And without those religions there would be no yoga that just would not be there well what this is is there's this serpent how convenient is that a serpent that's down in your lower torso and the idea is to get it up to where you're it's controlling your mind and you have uh, I believe eight seven or eight chakras between the lowest extremities to the top of your head and then you open your third eye, which is another chakra. I believe it's eight, and then you're, the, you're, they open your third eye, and then there's one that makes you a god, and you're pretty much a god from then on, just like Buddha did. You know, I mean, he made himself a god because he made it to this bar chakra. Okay, that's what that's all about. Okay, well, you got this serpent that's supposed to come up and control your mind. What does that tell you? right away. Shouldn't that not should that or should it not be a red flag to any Christian? It better be. But see, they don't teach you these things. I can show you proof. I can show you proof. Most of these stacks of rocks along the river or along the road or different places are because of that. They're a little altar. And I can prove that to you. Some people don't do that. Some people just stack rocks because it's fun to stack rocks. I know of one particular person that thinks it's pretty fun to knock them down, get out and just kick them over. <laughs> I've even stopped for it. <laughs> because it's, it's an altar. But we don't have false gods here. You want to bet? You want to bet? And they're every false god. Every false god, I don't care how you slice it, is demonically inspired. Every one of them, Paul. Well, you know what it says in the Bible. If it isn't Jesus, what is it? It's got to be. It's dung. Yeah, yeah. There it's it's U N G. If it's the Lord, it's dung. How, how many of you have ever heard? You know, it's just a piece of metal. Dad and I were talking about this yesterday. It's just a piece of metal. It doesn't talk. It a piece of wood, and it doesn't say anything, and all this kind of stuff. How many of you have ever heard somebody say something to that regard? I have. You know, uh, that's not probably not true. They wouldn't worship it if it didn't have an ability to have an effect on their life. Now, they don't understand that it's not God. It is Satan. 
or one of his idiot cronies. Okay? This is what we're dealing with with this. Now, I want to get into this today with this idea that we're facing demonic activity daily. How about this dream catcher up here on the hill? It's just a bunch of rope, right? Kind of resembles a spider web. Well, what it's for is to catch good dreams and only allow, or bad dreams, I mean, and only allow good dreams in. Okay? What is the deal with that? Demonic. Huh? How do we not understand this? And then people come into our community and they say, boy, I can just feel the demonic oppression in this, in this area. Well, of course you can, because we're right in the throes of it. There's a, in, in Revelation, it talks about a place where Satan dwells. Okay, and it was one of the, one of the towns that Jesus wrote a letter to one of the churches. Well, you know where I think that is now? And I'm going to say this carefully, and I could go into a lot of detail about this. It's not unthought of, but Mount Shasta. Do you guys know of the stories that... Are talking about the town of Mount Shasta? The what? The town? No, the, the mountain. Itself. The mountain itself. There's supposed to be another uh, tier of life inside of it, and people are always going there to worship the mountain and to worship wow. all, all this stuff. I mean, I could show you videos. I could show you documents. I could show you real proof that this kind of stuff is going on. You know, and I question whether that's what you might call the place where Satan dwells, just like it said in Revelation there. Okay, so are we close enough to that to have a problem with this kind of thing? You bet. And I'm not saying Mount, Mount Shasta is a bad mountain. That's not what I'm talking about. Well, the reality of it is if you're talking about Satan and one-third of the angels, they're all over this whole planet. They are. They, they are. I, I only... I only bring that up because of the fact that Jesus made reference to Satan having a dwelling place on earth oh, yeah. back in when he was having John write Revelation, mm -hmm. one of the seven churches okay, and so I mean you could almost see it when they when the first church of Satan was developed in San Francisco you know that exists for sure I mean we live in the heart of this kind of stuff and then you wonder why California is so bad of course, there's a reason for it. Okay, so all this to say this. I am not subject to Satan nor his demons. And as a believer, you're not subject to them either. We can choose to do their bidding, but we're not subject to them. I've heard people say, well, I have to sin, I'm human. No, you don't. No, you don't. You've been crucified with Christ, now you live. What got crucified? The old way. The evil old man. Yep. Well, the problem is we're good resurrectionists. We bring them back up, do we not? I mean, we do that. That's why Paul had to say, I die daily. You know, and, and Okay, we, we got to get into this because it's it's a long thing. Verse 1, Then they came to the other side of the sea. Now remember, he just said before, on that same evening, let us cross over to the other side. Okay, then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. When he had come out of the boat, what does the next word in, my, in your Bible say? Mine says, immediately, immediately, there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Why in the world, let's, let's think about this for a second, why in the world would there be an immediate confrontation between Jesus, God on foot, the God, and a demon? <laughs> why would that be? Terry, it's, it's the same thing that we face today. Because it was available. That's a simple answer for it. 
and the demon wanted to fight against God. Do they not want to fight against God? They don't want God to be victorious. Satan didn't want God to be victorious. That's why he had Jesus killed on a cross. Well, <laughs> ta-da, you know, uh, victorious anyhow. Thank you very much. You just helped me out, you know. Um, that's kind of the attitude with it. So, when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him not even in chains because he had often been bound with shackles and chains okay we're going to stop with that for a second can I use a real illustration of this and I, I hope you'll understand where I'm going with this. All of us in here remember Fred Trimble. Okay. A man just plagued with demonic activity, I'm sure of it. And hurting so bad that his recourse was to turn to drugs. You know. Made him into a... demonic in this town. Huh? There's a lot of evil in yeah, this that, Yeah, I, I agree. That's why I'm working with this, Terry. That's exactly why I'm working with you this. You hear the voices that come into your house, they do things. I mean, I've seen things that nobody believed me. And the voices are still out there. They won't stop in the name of Jesus by the power and authority. They, they're evil. They're demonic. Yeah. They're Satan. So we have an obligation. I, I will, I'll, let me, I, I need to stop for a second and say this. A Christian cannot be possessed by a demon. Well, it feels like it sometimes when you're getting attacked and you're not doing anything wrong. Terry, we could be oppressed by a demon. And there's a huge thing to be oppressed by a demon. They still voices off they your attack. telephone. They still, voice, they still pictures off your computer. That's evil. That's thieving. I believe it was Roy Sprague that said that this area is one of the seats of Satan. Yes, I believe it. Well, and, and I, I don't disagree. The chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. I want to centralize on that one word, tame him. Okay, so if he couldn't be tamed, what was he? Wild. Wild. Okay, now do we not see that in our world today? Yes. Wild people. Uh, uh, let's be honest about it. We say, what, what's our first recourse to this? We blame it on drugs or alcohol. Well, here's the thing. Those drugs and that alcohol is what they're doing to try to free themselves from the pain of this. Yeah, but doesn't the people drink beer that goes out and talks to you out in the voices in the sky or whatever it's coming from, recordings or whatever it is? I've seen them drink. I've seen them do drugs. How much... How much does that go on? And that's our first I mean, recourse. You wonder why that's people out in happy camp doesn't come to church. What? You wonder why people doesn't come to church in happy camp? Because they're not saved. No, they listen to the Dombani. Well, we have we have the solution to it right here. And always day and night he was in the mountain tombs, crying out and cutting himself with the stones and. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. Okay, now there's something a little bit odd. There's something a little bit odd. You know what the problem is? He wanted to worship him. And he ran to do so. Because he knew Jesus could do something to free him. That nothing else could. They tried to tame him. They tried to chain him. They did everything they could do as people and nothing worked. Okay, so what do we do in our society? Well, we send them to behavioral health out in Wairika. Yeah, thinking they're crazy and they're not. 
or else we go to the town and we say, well, they look like a bunch of stoners to me. I'm not worrying about them. Actually, there's only one thing that can change somebody's mind, and it ain't none of the things you were talking about. Of course. Of course. There's that's why That's why he ran to Jesus. Now, who are we supposed to be representing, and who do we have living within us? Jesus. Jesus. So these guys, why aren't they coming to us the same way? I have an answer for that. Because they're not saved. Well, no, it's because they look at us and they say, well, why would I want any part of that? They don't care about me. And for the most part, they're right. I'm not saying that across the board. I'm saying that for the most part, they're right. You might care about these people, and if you do, great. I don't. Do something about it. They will never, ever, ever be freed from the grip of Satan until they have a confrontation with Jesus. That's why this guy did what he did. That's why he did what he did. He ran to Jesus and fell down and worshipped him. And we have demonic things all around us all the time going on. And I'm sad to say in our communities up and down the river here, Satan's winning the fight. Paul? You know what it is? It's the end, brother. That's why it's well, I, I agree. I agree. But we, we that doesn't free us from the responsibility, no, no. Paul. Uh, let me tell you something real quick. Uh, I saw Katie Greeno yesterday. Okay. She's had a problem for a long time. Yeah. And and I know she's really sick. I don't know if y'all know this. But I told her, I says, you know, no matter what, Katie, I would be, I would be trying to talk to the Lord. And, and, you know, the surprising answer is she said, yeah, I'm going to. Good. Good. I think she left town, maybe. See, Paul, here, here's the thing. They know where to turn. Fred knew where to turn. Every once in a while, he'd show up in here. He'd sit right back there behind Dad. <coughs> but he was so entwined in it. Don't I know it. I had a problem with it anyway. <coughs> Just remember this. Just remember this. That those people can be freed one way, and that's through Jesus. Okay. He cried out with a loud voice, and this is what he said, What do I have to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. And I'm not convinced... I'm not convinced that that's the unclean spirit talking. I'm not convinced that that's the un... Everybody goes that way automatically, and I'm not convinced that that's the case. What does it say? It doesn't say that the demon cried out. It says he cried out with a loud voice. What do I have to do with you? He came and worshipped him, but what? what can you do for me, Jesus? Basically is the question. He knew who he was. Would a demon cry out to Jesus? It's hard to say. It's hard to say. People just go that direction with this, and I'm not convinced that that's accurate, but rather this confused but hopeful man that came running to him to worship him. And what do I have to do with you? You know, what's he saying with that? I, I won't you do something? And we, just a second, one, one quick thought, Terry. Then they come in here to our church with that same basic question. Carrie, uh, Katie Greeno came in that same way, Paul, not that long ago, sat right there and made comments and then got up and left. And I haven't seen her to talk to her since as much as I've wanted to. Terry, your thought? Oh, just the next verse. It says, For he had been saying to him, Come out of this man, you unclean spirit. Okay. So he was, sounded like he was talking to them. 
Well, he. Of course, this guy I had. He just didn't say. I didn't see your lips move. Yeah. But yeah. He did. It, I. I Jesus began his conversation with the unclean spirit. Okay, what's he doing with it? First, he wanted him to identify himself, and second of all, you're out. Okay, who else has the authority to do that? Do you? There's a guy, a singer. A lot of you may have heard of him, may not have. His name was Carmen. He's dead now, but his name—that's all the name I know him by—is Carmen, um, and he sang a lot of songs about going out and conquering the devil. Go do it. Three pastors joined a, started a musical group. Three pastors. And they talked about conquering Satan. Can we conquer Satan? That's the point, Terry. That's the point. Can, can What about a demon? A demon's not quite Satan. No, but he's got the powers of Satan. <laughs> it's a little more than we can handle on our own, isn't it? Yep. And that's why people who don't have Christ are running out and finding drugs or alcohol to ease their pain. This is what goes on. And it makes them happy. And instead of fa uh, facing it with this supposed Christian government, and I know that is really a loose word for today's world, but um, instead of dealing with it, what do they do? They just make drugs legal so that you can go deal with it your own way. It, Am I down on drugs and alcohol and stuff? Yeah, but that's not my reason for this. That's not my reason for this. Paul? I need to say one thing from a man who's lived on the streets for years and been to prison. Okay. The reason I went to prison was drugs. Yeah. And the only thing that can change this is God. Of course. Amen. How, how, how did you get out of prison and become a changed man, Paul. I got down on my knees one day when no one was there. And when I did this, I called out to him. I, I said, Lord, I feel like I'm a whale of garbage in the bottom of the ocean after what I've done. And in about 10 seconds, the room filled with the roar of Borealis. And then a bolt of lightning came through the wall and hit me. And I'm not joking when I'm telling you this. Yeah. That's how. And the message was, you got to change what you're doing right now. That's what he told me. Why do you think some of these people come into the church looking for help? It's for help. Now tell me this isn't relevant for our world today. I don't know about out in Wairika, I suspect. I don't know about in Texas, I suspect. I don't know about Edmonton, Alberta. I don't know about Toronto, Ontario. I don't know about. What about Moscow? London. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you could go to all these cities that we all know of, and I don't know about them for sure. But I know this: that they're coming into the churches here because they're hurting. And the only thing that can ease that pain is not drugs, not alcohol, but Jesus. I can prove it. From Scripture, we don't have time. I'm over halfway done this morning. But the only thing that will ever change that is Jesus. And so, why are we not reaching out to these people? I mean, okay, Paul, you've said that you've had contacts with Katie. Great, praise God, that's great. Well, I think she left, but all I said really was, "Please turn to the Lord." You know. Okay, maybe I that's enough, that Paul. Sure did. Maybe that's enough. I'm open. Brilliant. Would it not do our hearts good to see her come in a changed lady and sitting in her right mind here in church? That would be a miracle. And, and we can name how many others this way.
he told told this demon he says come out of the man unclean spirit and he asked him what is your name and he answered him saying my name is legion for we are many Okay, here's the thing. I have actually heard of that demon in another setting. You're, you're going to find this kind of surprising, but there's a lady in Yelm, Washington. I don't think she's doing it much anymore because she's gotten awful old. Um, uh, channels a demon named Ramtha. Okay. Her her name is Jay Z Julia something or other Knight. Jay Z Knight is how she goes by. And she has Ramtha School of Enlightenment up there. This Ramtha is said the same way. We are many. One other one. This is even more popular. A lot of... Uh, come on, brain. Um, oh, I hate that. I, uh, yeah. Uh, the guy died. And his wife that has been doing it is carrying it on. Hicks. Abraham Hicks is the name of this demon. And he always refers to himself in the we or third person plural. We, 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 we. Why? Because that demon is still active. Now, uh, that one there is one of the, Abraham Hicks, Esther Hicks is the lady's name, her husband, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he died a while back, but they're still very, very popular with the New Age movement, and you know that's going rampant these days, if you could call it this, it's the fastest growing religion on earth, which kind of it is. I can't even get into everything that they teach, but we're many. So, do we understand that concept? No. I don't care. I can't call me many. I'm wide enough to be a few, but not many. <laughs> My point simply is this. I'm going to bet that this same demon or the same echelon of demon, maybe it's not the same one, maybe he can be beat by Jesus too. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, if they die, they go meet Christ, then maybe. My, my name is Legion, for we are many. How sad. This guy, what was he being tormented by? The enemy. A demon who was plentiful. <laughs> sure hmm. Now I'm going to ask this and understand where I'm going with it, please. How many does it take to be more than enough of a demon? One. One. There are certain demons, if I understand it correctly, okay. that have to inhabit. Okay. Uh, Jesus had an illustration. He said there was a man who had a demon mm -hmm. exercised, and so it was house was clean, mm -hmm. but they came back with more. With more, yeah. So yeah. unless you fill that house with the with the Lord, you sure. Say, sure. Sure. So the demon begged him, let's see, now a large herd of swine was feeding. He begged, uh, begged him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country. Now there's a large herd of swine 
feeding near the mountain. So the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine that we may enter them. And once Jesus gave them permission, the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. Could you imagine that? How many does it take to be a real problem? One. And now there's 2,000 pigs going to take it because of these demons that are many. And the herd ran violently down the the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. They had to leave. They had to leave because Jesus told them to leave. They had a confrontation with Jesus. They had to leave as a result. The problem is we go and we see these people like that and if we do anything at all it seems we try to do it in our own strength. Blan, is there demonic activity in the Philippines? Yeah, have, have you seen this kind of thing going on? I, I suspect it. You know, what it, it's all over the world because Satan is active and his demons are active. Greater is he, the Bible says, that is in you than he that is in the world. So who's got the power, who's got the authority, and who gets the victory? Jesus. Jesus. In every case. In every case. Why? Because if it's Jerry doing it, Jerry's opening himself up to a problem. You know, I kind of think that that's why in 1 Timothy when it's talking about how pastors are supposed to, you know, or, you know the, the people, okay, somebody sins. I believe it's First Timothy anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody sins, and it says, go and help that guy, but be careful because you, you know, that you, so that you don't get caught into it yourself. Why? Because if we try to do it on our own, we're opening ourselves up to a big problem. Can I be possessed? Not at all. But I can, in fact, be harassed pretty strongly by them. Right. And do they or do they not encourage us to sin? Yes, they do. As somebody who encourages us to sin, what hope do we have? Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Okay, now we're going to get back to the gospel. It's because of the gospel that I am freed from the demonic should I choose to be freed from the demonic. If I choose to follow Satan, I've become an adulterous bride that's following somebody to whom I'm not even a, um, attached in any way anymore because of a promise of, you know, oh boy, I, I can make this feel so good. It'll be so nice. I deserve to do it because and we can come up with a million different things. Every time we sin, every time we sin, we are not being justified by the blood of Jesus. We're being justified by our own self. I am self-justifying in order to sin. I don't care what kind of sin it is. That's how it is. Either we deserve it, we want it. I mean, how many things could we come up with for reasons why we might sin? Okay. I don't have to do it because I'm a believer and all I'm doing is being harassed by demons not indwelt by them. A person who's indwelt by it can't help it. We see him running to Jesus, help me, help me, basically. And Jesus did. Let's look at the end result of it. So those who fed the swine fled, and they told in the city in the country, told it in the city in the country, they went out to see what it was that happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. Okay, what did Jesus leave out? 
Nothing. He got rid of it. Problem solved. They had tried. They chained him up. They tried to tame him. They tried to do all these different things. Probably, if he was in our world today, they'd offer him drugs. They'd offer him a, something to ease his mind. Let him sit down in therapy and talk to a psychologist or a psychoanalyst and see what was going on. Well, maybe, just maybe, we can help you with this right here. Give him some type of a mind drug of some sort. I mean, that's a quick way out of the problem. This idea of being bipolar is one that's really common around here. And it makes people freak out when they don't take their medicine. Well, when they do drugs on top of it, it doesn't help. Much it doesn't help either, Terry. You're right. I mean, look at Fred. Look at Big Dan. You know, claimed to being bipolar. And had to take his medicine. If he didn't, he would turn into a very mean baby Huey, but a baby Huey nonetheless. Great big guy that could just crunch you like a bug. And, you know, cops had trouble with him. People had trouble with him. And this kind of stuff went on and on and on. Why? Because there was something wrong. And they just want to say, well, it's just this mental disorder. You know, it's spirit inside of him. I had a couple questions. The first one is, what did he do to have that many demons enter him? It's hard to say. Yeah, you know, we don't know. Yeah. I mean, for back in Jesus' time, now we could say, well, we've got all kinds of things we can get into. Yeah. But the second thing is that when uh, that uh, legion, the, the speaker of that group, said, uh, Jesus, Son of the Most High God, I know you. Yeah. You know, he personally, he knew it. So he never went to Peter or he never he never just bypassed him. And, uh, he went right to right to the source. So I think a lot of times if we're not careful, we may be the source and not Jesus. Yeah. But, and you're right. Well, I never heard of any voices or anything until I moved up here. And they was telling me to talk to this bush, and it was God talking. It wasn't God, it was demonic. Verse 16 says, Those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon-possessed. And about the swine, they began to plead with Jesus. My Bible says him, but that's who the him is referring to. They began to plead with him to depart from their region. Why? You got something that good, you'd think, man, stay. Stay. Do more, please. Do more. You know, I think it's probably for the same reason that that would probably happen here. And why would it happen here? Well, because we're, we're content seeing these people sit on the curb or walk down the road swinging at air coming into church every once in a while maybe Jesus leave us alone we're happy here again who's got the victory Jesus the only one who possibly could have the victory. Now why when we live in such an area as this are we not out with our sword in hand going after it? Gino Jennings, I'll go back to him. He's one of many but that have tried this. and Just trying for all he's worth to cast somebody out or a demon out of somebody and he couldn't do it. For five years up here, I was a street minister. I mean, I've, I've walked the streets for 14 years with the cross 
and everybody I could talk to was sitting on the street, on the curb, whatever, talking about Jesus. Problem is, I found nobody wanted to hear about. Okay, Jesus. now, now, see, okay, I agree, I agree, John. Don't ever, ever underestimate how much I agree with that right there. But God didn't tell us in the Great Commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel to those that want to hear it. Or make them believe. That's not our job to make them believe. When they stand before God, I don't want a single person to say, well, Jerry never told me. And have God go, you know what, you're right. I told him to tell you, but he didn't do it. Depart from me. I think another thing is that when Jesus cast out demons, he told them where to go. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't, if he didn't tell them where to go. Well, and here's here's the big the real big problem with it and, and this is something that I've struggled with in a lot of cases that there again that's God's job to do if he's going to cast them out he's going to cast them out who am I to choose all I can do is when God says talk to this person talk to this person have I blown it you bet you bet. I, I'm guessing probably that some of you have blown it too. <laughs> times, times when we should have said and we didn't, or said exactly the wrong thing. I was in the grocery store one time, and this guy came up. He looked familiar, and he said, "Years ago, you gave me this. Little, I gave him a little New Testament. Okay. He turned into a Christian. Huh. I was like, all oh, right, you know, I forgot all about. You never know who's going to respond." What what about some of these people that are truly great evangelists? You know, if somebody didn't tell them because he was they were scared to tell this one or that one, how many people would not get to go to heaven as a result of it? And here, that's the way we live so often. My dad, I shouldn't just exclusively say this, but understand me, please. My dad was the one that led me to led me to Jesus. I'm sure my mom had a lot to do with me coming that direction too. Okay, but if he had been scared to tell me, or ignored telling me, or decided not to tell me, then what about? my children my son Tom for example who's very much pastor material how about my grandkids who are being led to Jesus by Tom I'm I'm using him not because of any uh, problem with David that's not the point I'm using Tom because Tom's passing it to the next generation see and that's where the difference comes in. Because he's not afraid to tell and his ex-wife. Well, I'll tell you what, she is belligerent about it. And little Tucker telling his mom about Jesus and how she he needs she needs to get with Jesus. Quit acting like an idiot and come to Jesus, that kind of thing. And she gets angry with him to the point of near violence. And the little guy just keeps it up. You know why? Because he's not afraid. And see, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I've got to close with this. That's what I'm talking about when I say that Romans 1.16 has become a, a New Year's resolution for me. I don't like New Year's resolutions. But here's the thing, I'm not going to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. I see it in my grandson and I go, that's how I need to be. 
Tucker, if you watch this, I don't mean anything bad by this. Just understand me, please. <laughs> Too stupid to care, so to speak. Jump in with both feet anyway. And that's what we need. People like that. But I can't do it without growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I threw in Second Timothy or Second Peter three eighteen as well. So there you go. Last week, a couple weeks ago, sermon all over again. It's time for me to quit. I can tell now. <laughs> We're gonna end it. But oh, that we would understand this passage and go to the one who can fix the problems and take that one to the streets and don't worry about the outcome of it that's not between us and God that's between them and God the outcome is their problem my problem is am I going to obey God or am I not going to obey God when he says speak we need to speak we need to do what he's called us to do let's close Lord you're great I don't know of a better way to put it, but you have the power to eject demons that we couldn't even imagine being able to deal with. Every time we would try, we would fail, but you are victorious. Help us to take you to the streets. Help us to bring you to these people that are hurting to make a difference in our community. And while Paul is right with the we're in the end and that's just how it's going to be help us not to use that as a scapegoat to not speak but rather that we would open your word victoriously to the people and bring what you have to say to them give us strength give us courage help us lord we thank you for it in your name amen